welcome back to shikshana uh, so i'll be continuing about the fourth module uh, uh, second portion so in that uh, last class we had touched upon medical waste uh, waste out of uh, wealth out of waste and assessment of waste these things now we'll see further about industrial wa industrial waste and how it can be how these uh, solid waste can be segregated how it can be managed in a city level industrial waste is uh, something that which has been produced by industrial activities which includes any material that is rendered useless during a manufacturing process such as that of factories mills mining operation basically the residues the useless residues which has been considered as useless from these factories mills mining operations etc they are called as industrial waste so industrial waste are many in that we can broadly classified few of them like dirt and gravel masonry and concrete scrap metal oil which is used for in uh, making uh, product making purposes and other things solvents different chemicals they use in industries scrap lumber which even vegetable matter from restaurants even the restaurants uh, though it is not industrial sector but the vegetable matter which is produced from restaurants can can be considered as industrial waste industrial waste may be solid semi solid or liquid in form right so it may be hazardous waste some types of uh, some types of which are toxic could be chemicals the which they use or oils which they use could be hazardous also or non hazardous waste also it can be solid semi solid and water it can be hazardous and non hazardous also so industrial waste may pollute the nearby soil or adjacent water bodies and can contaminate ground water lakes streams rivers or coastal waters industrial waste is often mixed into municipal waste making accurate assessments difficult so that is one major issue because industrial wastes are mixed into the municipal municipal waste and it is very uh, difficult to assess the accurate municipal solid waste msw so uh, this industrial waste since it could be very harmful dangerous it can leak into the soil it can go into the river it can go into the streams coastal waters it they it can be let out to the coastal waters etc so it harms the environment surrounding very very easily and directly it harms the surroundings so industrial waste can be classified on the basis of their characteristics so waste is waste in solid form waste which is in solid form but some pollutants with, within or in liquid or li fluid forms they are crockery industry crockery industry or washing of minerals or coal waste in dissolved and the pollutant is in liquid form the example the dairy industry these there are different different types of industries produce different different kinds of waste it could be solid or non solid or it could be hazardous or non hazardous even but if it is hazardous what all happens with the environment is one major thing is water pollution right so water pollution is something which is very very common when there are industries around and most of the times industries require lot of water also so now uh, the nearby services whatever water services is there will be uh, difficult to manage the hygiene so for many industrial process water is used which comes in contact with harmful chemicals so these chemicals may include organic compounds such as solvents metals nutrients or radioactive materials it can have all of these it can have nutrients it can have radioactive materials it can have metals organic compounds etc 
right so these chemicals which are made up of all of these are used in the product making so if the waste water is discharged without treatment that's the main concern if the waste water is discharged without treatment ground water and surface water bodies like lakes streams rivers coastal waters etc will become polluted with serious impacts on human health and environment directly so drinking water sources and irrigation water used for farming may also be affected so the pollutants may degrade or destroy habitat for animals and plants in coastal areas fish and other aquatic life can be contaminated by untreated waste beaches and other recreational areas can be damaged or closed waste water containing nutrients nutrients in the sense which could be nitrates and phosphates often causes eutrophication which can kill kill off existing life in water bodies so a thailand study uh, uh, study which is done in thailand for sees focusing on water pollution origins founds that the highest concentration of water con contamination in the utapo river had a direct correlation to industrial waste water discharges so industrial waste water discharges kills kills the life in water bodies it also kills the other nutrients in the uh, other uh, required elements in the environment industrial water treatment that is the reason why the water has to be treated at the source itself why the waste it could be water waste water or it could be solid waste most of it if it is treated in at the source if the source is large quantity then it solves half of the issues so industrial wa waste water treatment describes the processes used for treating waste water that is produced by industries as an undesirable by product after treatment the treated industrial waste water or effluent may be reused or released to a sanitary sewer or to a surface water in the environment so it is very very important to have treating waste water segment in the vicinity itself in the industrial vicinity itself if it is there the treated industrial waste water or which is called as an effluent may be reused again it can be reused or if it is not reusable it can be released to sanitary sewer sewer lines it can be released or to a surface water only to a surface water not the ground water it can be released into the surface water so what happens in the surface water is it takes long time to settle down and the, all the waste gets settled down and it sometimes run off water also uh, it can just move off from the surface sources of industrial waste water include battery manufacturing battery manufacturing the chemicals which we use for battery is quite harmful chemical manufacturing chemical itself to be manufactured so chemical manufacturing sectors electrical power plants electricity power plants food industry iron and steel industry metal working mines and quarries to uh, do mines and quarries again lot of water is used and there is lot of waste generated also nuclear industry nuclear industry again lot of chemicals is been used harmful chemicals is been used oil and gas extraction all petroleum refining petroleum refining sectors petrochemicals the chemicals which is created by petrol so petrochemicals pharmaceutical manufacturing that is medical sector pulp and paper industry smelters textile mills industrial oil contamination water treatment and wood preserving all of these acts as a source for industrial waste water generation treatment processes include 
what treatment can be done for these to maintain brain treatment brain treatment can be done solids removal can be done example chemical precipitation filtration can be done oils and grease removal can be done removal of uh, biodegradable organics can be done removal of other organics removal of acids and alkalis removal of toxic materials if in the source itself these segregation and treatment is done it is better right so brine treatment solid removals like chemical precipitation filtration can be done for the water it can be filtered easily and oils and grease removal can be done at the source itself in, uh, which in which is mixed with the waste water produced in industries removal of biodegradable organics they can contain lot of organic matters in it so biodegradable organic can be separated directly removal of other organics removal of acids and alkalis this can be also chemically removed and removal of toxic materials these uh, these uh, filtration if it is done it is better to leave afterwards so industrial water uh so industrial wastewater treatment follows this basic process so the fresh water is released here to the wastewater producing process here is a wastewater producing process here is a zero liquid discharge treatment plant and there are few solids which is disposed so fresh water is produced to wastewater producing process and uh, from wastewater waste water is again from the waste water producing process it is gone waste water producing process is nothing but industries so from the industry waste water is left over to zero liquid discharge de treatment plant that means there is a treatment plant in the between so from the industry waste water is released into zero liquid discharge that means from this treatment plant there is no liquid which is discharged afterwards so it has to come back and rotate there only it is, it shouldn't go after that treatment plant so that's the content main content over here so zero liquid discharge treatment plant treats the water and makes it very very safe and if it is not uh, if it is treated it can be reused again so it can be sent back to the industries and then again the waste water can again be recycling there only so that way there is a reduction so certain kind of reduction in the waste water releasing towards the environment right after that only uh, solids are separated waste water is cleared here only only solids are separated in the solids few of them should be disposed uh, because might be there is no use of that and few of them will recover resource recovery will happen and few of them will be reused few of the solid matters can be reused in the industries chemicals for reuse so those chemicals can be reused segregated after segregation it can be reused so like this zero discharge could be except for this disposal less amount of discharge can be maintained if all the industries has this intention so that is about different types of wastes now let's see uh, as a municipal solid waste or a solid waste management how cities manage or uh, what is the process to be followed to cut off the landfills proportion of landfills and to save the environment and also to reuse and recycle or to um, keep the uh, keep the a vicinity cleaner right uh, so also the intention could be how to make a circular economy so these are the four process involved in uh, solid waste management collection segregation treatment and disposal these are the four 
uh, four uh, uh, ways how we can clear the solid waste. So, in that first process collection, first, first and foremost is collection of the solid waste. So, the functional element of collection includes not only the gathering of solid waste and recycle materials, but also to transport these materials after collection to the location where the collection vehicle is emptied. This location may be materials processing facility, a transfer station or a landfill disposal site. So, waste handling and separation storage and processing at the source should be done. So, it is not just collection of, uh, collection means not just gathering of solid waste and recycled material, recyclable materials, but transport, also the transport of these materials. That means after collection, it has to be, it, the vehicle has to be emptied, right? So, it has to reach different parts. That is, materials processing facility will be there. So, it has to reach the a transfer station. It, it should also reach the transfer station or a landfill disposal site. Basically, the idea is that collection vehicle has to be emptied for every process or for every day or for every period of collection. So, that is about collection. After that, we have waste handling and separation. Once these uh, division and uh, transportation of this waste is done in different different sectors, each sector has to handle the waste and separation of the waste is very very important. Segregation or separation of the waste is very important which involves activities associated with waste management until the waste is placed in storage containers for collection. So, handling also encompasses that movement of loaded containers to the point of collections. Separating different types of waste components is an important step in the handling and storage of solid waste at the source of collections. Separating different types of waste components is an important step. Separating different types of waste components is an important step in the handling and storage of solid waste at the source of the collection. At the source of the collection, if it is done, it is very simpler to handle the waste. Segregation and processing and transformation uh, of solid wastes. Now, how it can be segregated? The types of means and facilities that are now used for the recovery of waste materials that have been separated at the source include curbside, curbside in the uh, collection, uh, curbside collection, drop off, buyback centers. So, in these centers, separation and segregation has to happen. So, the separation and processing of waste that have been separated at the source and the separation of commingled wastes usually occur at a materials recovery facilities, transfer stations, combustion facilities and treatment plants. So, the intention of segregation is it should be made sure that uh, from the collection point which has been transferred to different sectors for uh, treatment of waste, there again segre segregation has to happen mandatorily. That means in material recovery facility, it has to be separated. Transfer stations, they have to separate. Combustion facilities and treatment plants, there also separation has to happen. After the transport, again it has to be transferred and transported. So, this element involves two main steps. First, the waste is transferred from a smaller connection vehicle to larger transport equipment. The waste is then transported. Again, there also there might, again in this segregation also there might be lost lots of waste remained, right? So, that has to be again transferred and transported. First, the waste is transferred from a smaller collection vehicle to larger transport equipment. The waste is then transported usually over long distances to a processing or disposal site. After that, treatment has to be done and disposal has to be done. After the uh, segregation, 
it goes into the treatment zones and then from the treatment zones the residues has to be disposed again. So the disposal of waste by landfilling or land spreading is the ultimate fate. Uh, it is considered as fate only. Landfilling or land spreading is the ultimate fate of all solid waste, whether they are residential waste collected and transported directly to a landfill site, residual materials from materials recovery facilities, residue from the combustion of solids waste, compost or other substances from various solid waste processing facilities. A modern sanitary landfill is not a dump. It is an engineered facility used for disposing of solid wastes on land without creating nuisances or hazards to public health or safety, such as the problems of insects and the contamination of groundwater. So this is the final thing, whatever it is, some amount of thing, some amount of waste goes into the landfill. So it is kind of a fate for all solid waste. So as I earlier said, it's not just the residential waste collected and transported will go directly to landfill sites. In the collection, we spoke about some portion might directly go to landfill site. Not just that, even the residual materials from material recovery facilities, from the collection point, uh, it could have been sent to the material recovery facilities also. There also, there is a residue which again has to go somewhere. So that is again towards landfill for certain things. Residue from the combustion of solid waste, solid waste combustion, they also have some residues that is also gone. Sometimes it can be used as compost also or other substances from solid waste processing facilities. Some very, it could, if it is very minor, then I think it could be manageable. But then since the load on the solid, solid waste management is too huge, maybe landfills are like essential. But in a modern sanitary landfill, modern sanitary landfill is not just a dump. It is also engineered facility. It has been worked out how it can be dumped there, used for disposing of solid waste and land without creating nuisances or hazards. So it can be even dumped without creating nuisances. After this, it has to be again reused. In recent years, environmental organizations such as Freegal or Free Cycle Network have been gaining popularity for their online reuse networks. These networks provide a worldwide online registry, registry of unwanted items that would otherwise be thrown away. So they have gone pop, got popularity for their online reuse networks. It can be Googled if required. Uh, they have uh, online reuse networks has been got into popularity. So these networks provide a worldwide online registry for unwanted items, which if not, people will throw it away, right? So how many of uh, most of the products which we have are extra only nowadays? So it could be clothes, it could be mobiles, it could be ear, ear, wire for air, air, air pods or uh, it could be uh, charger, mobile chargers, so many things are extra. So that could be given back to this network. So these networks provide worldwide online registry of unwanted items that would otherwise be thrown away for individuals and non-profit to reuse and recycle. Therefore, this free internet based services reduces landfill pollution and promotes the gift economy. There are a lot of uh, e-waste collectors who are there all over the world uh, and uh, it is just that it takes uh, it takes an effort to give the waste segregated at the source itself to different different people. So finally somewhere it has to again some portion of it has to reach the landfill. So landfills are created by land dumping. Land dumping methods vary. Most commonly, it involves the mass dumping of waste into a designated area. So what happens, it is a mass dumping will be done in some designated area. 
usually a hole or a side hill. After the waste is dumped, it is then compacted by larger machines. After lot of waste is done, they use these larger machines and compact, compa make it compact. Press it so that it becomes a compact. L lesser portion is, lesser area is occupied for that, com uh, for that waste. When the dumping cell is full, it is then sealed with the plastic sheet and covered in several feet of dirt. This is the primary method of dumping in US because of the low cost and abundance of unused land in North America. In North America, there is abundance of unused land. So they use this method. They also cover it with plastic, right? Landfills are regulated in the US by EPA, that is Environmental Protection Agency, which enforces standards provided in the Resource Conservation Recovery Act, such as requiring liners or groundwater monitoring. This is because landfills pose the threat to the pollution and contaminate groundwater. The wild landfill is threat because it can easily contaminate groundwater, the groundwater which is in the channels underground, so that can be contaminated easily. So groundwater is the source of water for drinking water. So that has to be maintained intact hygiene. So the signs of pollution are effectively masked by disposal companies and it is often hard to see any evidence. Usually landfills are surrounded by large walls or fences. This is what is done in other countries, US. But whereas in uh, countries like India and all, it is put op open, it's dumped open sometimes. Though it has walls, but uh, the odor or the smell which, which has been released from that passes like uh, kilometers. Usually landfills are surrounded by large walls or fences hiding the mounds. It can just hide the visual mound. Usually it can hide the mound, that's it. Large amounts of chemical odor eliminating agent are sprayed in the air surrounding landfills to hide the evidence of the rotting waste into inside the plant. That is what is happening in other countries. They spray chemical odor around that to avoid the odor to pass from that place to the other. So, this municipal waste can also be used for energy generation. Municipal waste can be used to generate energy because of the lipid content present within it. A lot of municipal solid waste products can be converted into clean energy if the lipid content can be accessed and utilized. So several technologies has been developed that make the processing of MSW for energy generation cleaner and more economical than ever before, including landfill gas capture, combustion, pyrolysis, gasification, and plasma or gasification. So we were we were discussing morning about uh, we were discussing about uh, pyrolysis in the earlier session. That is uh, about waste to wealth. How to convert the waste into wealth? So there. Uh, we quoted, quoted an example of how uh, oil is being prepared from the plastics. So that method is pyrolysis. So similarly, even from the landfill, the gas which is being generated, it could be methane and other gases, it can be captured in the landfill. So that process can be done, combustion can be done, plasma gasification also can be done. While Older waste incineration plants emitted a lot of pollutants. Recent regulatory change, changes and new technologies have significantly reduced the concern. US EPA, Environmental Protection Agency regulations in 1995 and 2000 under the Clean Air Act have succeeded in reducing emissions of dioxins from waste to energy facilities by more than 99% below 1990 levels while mercury emissions have been reduced by over 90 percent.
So that is about uh, uh, collection, segregation and how it can be transported to different requirement, whether it could, it is at city level or small uh, institutional level or small organizational level. It can be easily depart, uh, distributed to different zones after the source segregation and then towards the landfill, few of them and towards the other uh, um, energy or uh, uh, plants, treatment plants, it can be gone. And then few of the waste can be directly converted into um, uh, compost and manures which is required due to some process, uh, through some processes involved in it. And then finally, uh, the amount of landfill happening could be reduced to certain extent. So that these processes has to be monitored and done with voluntarily action. Right. So we have uh, next topic as biomethanation. That is the process how organic waste can be reused and utilized in a different manner. So what is biomethanation? Biomethanation technology has emerged as a viable option for managing the organic solid waste generated in the urban areas. Organic solid waste as we discussed, it could be from the food, it could be from the package, it could be from the garden waste, right, wood waste, etc. So these can be managed. So how it can be managed besides reducing the waste load by about 50 percent instead of taking it to the solid waste or filling it on the landfill, it can be reducing the load on 50 percent. Waste load can be reduced about 50 percent. So biomethanation, what it happens? It generates biogas, energy derivative, compost derivative and nutrient recovery. It is a process by which organic material is microbiologically converted under anaerobic conditions to biogas. Biomethanation is nothing but by the word itself you can see that there is a methane action happening and uh, biologically it is happening. So it is uh, microbiologically organic material is converted in under anaerobic condition. Anaerobic condition is where there is no presence of air in the conversion during the process of conversion. So organic material is microbiologically converted under anaerobic conditions to biogas. It is converted into biogas. These gas could be utilized for various other purposes. So three main physiological groups of microorganisms are involved in this. So what happens in this? Fermenting bacteria is used, organic acid oxidizing bacteria is used and methanogic archaea is also used, is involved in physiological activities. So these microorganisms what they do is they degrade organic water. So these Three, fermenting bacteria, organic acid oxidizing bacteria and methanogenic, genic, methanogenic archaea is, be, is uh, mix is uh, involved in microbiologically converting the organic matter into biogas. So these microorganisms degrade the organic matter via cascades of biomic chemical conversions to methane and carbon dioxide. So these, the industrial organic waste to energy biomethanation projects are generally capital intensive and financially sensitive to both operating costs including waste availability and revenue. They are very capital, in, generally capital intensive and financially sensitive. So a lot of capital is invested in uh, these projects, financially a lot of uh, support is required. So uh, uh, only at those time 
this methods could be adapted in converting organic waste into biogas. So, innovations in such projects seeks to improve overall energy output thereby minimizing the cost of energy generation. So, generally what happens in this biomethanation process is explained through this sketch. So, here we have these uh, uh, equipment or an arrangement where biomethanation process happens. So, what happens is uh, uh, from the animals and plants whatever organic matter is released that goes into this uh, container mixed with water that matter is mixed with water animal and agricultural waste is mixed with water then that is been that is processed into a anaerobic, anaerobic fermentations like this under the ground there is a container created huge size container created and when the uh, waste is mixed with the water it is let into this anaerobic uh, fermentation all the microbiological uh, entities uh, break down this uh, through fermentation and in in return it is releasing soil conditioner and liquid fertilizer is released in this likewise uh, the gas which is generated is used for cooking and lighting there is a generation of methane and carbon dioxide happening in this particular fermentation anaerobic fermentation which is used for diversify used like lighting and cooking also you can we can use it for so biogas plants are very very common biomethanation is nothing but biogas plant which is used in villages and all even in indian context these uh, uh, it is been used in uh, lot of uh, sectors agricultural sectors farmings etc but the thing is it requires a lot of maintenance and uh, somebody has to monitor it in continuous process. So that is the only uh, little drawback for smaller enterprises to you make it use. Otherwise uh, for a bigger setup this can be easily used and for cooking and all without using any other energies like gas and liquids these can be the same waste which is produced can only be used for heating water, cooking for uh, in hotels and all it is a very good way of using it. Even for lighting this energy can be used. So, electricity dependence can be reduced. So, likewise the energy also can be saved from this process. So, also in the go it gives the waste liquid waste which can be used as fertilizer and soil conditioner. So, it can be again reused for productivity. So, that is the process of biomethanation. Biomethanation is a process by which organic material is microbiologically converted under anaerobic conditions to biogas. So, it is a micro organic material which is microbiologically, microbiologically converted under anaerobic conditions means here lot of other bacteria are inserted to convert the waste into useful product. So, that is how it is called as microbiologically converted under anaerobic conditions to biogas. Biogas is released due to that process. So, three main uh, groups of microorganisms are involved as I early, earlier mentioned fermenting bacteria, organic acid oxidizing bacteria and methogenic archaea. So, even in uh, uh, organic matter these can be done. The process is called like this hydrolysis, acidogenesis stage 2, acetogenesis stage 3, methanogenesis stage 4. Organic matter 
which contains carbohydrates, lipids and proteins and etc. They are uh, mixed with the water which is called as hydrolysis. Acidogenesis is uh, carboxylic volatic acids, keto acids, hydroxy acids, ketones, alcohol, simple sugars, amino acids, hydrogen, carbon dioxide. They convert them into acidogenesis and then it is again short chain fatty acids. It has been converted into short chain fatty acids which again in turn provides acetate and carbon dioxide and hydrogen and in turn it provides methane and carbon dioxide which is a methanogenesis activity. So by methanation of organic 40 to 45 percent of urban solid waste is the organic uh, can be easily treated by anaerobic digestion. Solids 40 to 45 percent is a huge number. So imagine if this can this solid waste can be easily treated by anaerobic digestion. So solids in the organic waste decompose rapidly and can be treated by biomethanation process method. Solid waste is treated in closed vessels where in the absence of oxygen microorganisms break down the organic matter into stable residues and generate a methane rich biogas in the process. This biogas can then be used as a renewable energy to produce electricity. So this solid residue can be utilized as a manure. This is the whole process of biomethanation. Then we have uh, vermicomposting. This organic waste, it can be converted into compost very, very easily. In the earlier session in this, uh, we saw that this can be used as manure through this process. Organic matter can also be vermicompost. Vermicompost is what? It is an organic waste recycling technique that accelerates the process of composting by the interaction with earthworms and microorganisms. So composting, it can be converted into compost by adding earthworms and micro, few microorganisms into the organic waste. Just by adding these earthworms and microorganisms into this waste, it can be recycled again. What they do? They break it down into minor parts and then that becomes a compost for uh, reproduction of other plants and other things. Right? So it's an environmental friendly technique. It's very, very environmental friendly technique. At least in the biomethanation, there is a methane produced which is harmful sometimes for the environment if it is not uh, cased properly. But here, this is very, very environment friendly technique as it is an efficient, odorless and non-thermophilic process having the potential to reduce the waste volume as well as detoxify the toxic ingredients of the waste. It also can detoxify the toxic ingredients of waste which is there in organic wastes. Because these earthworms and microorganisms lie on that, so they eat, uh, they eat up and they break the organic waste into smaller portions. The resultant vermicompost which is a partially decomposed biological organic mixture after the earthworm activity has tremendous potential to be used as manure. Vermicompost is also a very very common process used by common people to produce uh, manure for their uh, own use, maybe for gardening or etc. like that. So there are few uh, um, bins, dust bins also have come into, into the market where this vermicompost can be made at individual small houses also, right. So there are these trust bins called as trust bins and other bins where layers of organic waste is put 
and other layer of other uh, microorganism is introduced into that and it turns the waste into compost. So that is also is been um, in the picture. So the resultant vermicompost which is a partially decomposed biological organic mixture after the earthworm architect. It is a partially decomposed biological organic mixture that is it. But which is done after the earthworm activity has tremendous, pot tremendous potential to be used as manure. It can be a very good natural manure which can be used for growing plants. So these could be used for other than using an, uh, chemical manure which is chemically or uh, induced manure. This could be the good source for manure, manuring activity and grow the uh, plants with without having any chemical effect on the body so by uh, by consuming those uh, um, plants and uh, vegetables etc uh, which is instead of having chemical compounds in that these menus can help it grow much better and natural way so these are few sources for uh, biomethanation so this will uh, conclude module 4 of uh, water supply and sanitation. So uh, till now we had uh, studied in mod module 4 we have, uh, we have discussed about uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, systems used for uh, organic waste to be converted into manures and compost. We also have discussed about how the wealth waste can be converted into wealth. What are the different types of waste, solid waste especially comes into the picture and how it can be reduced, how it can reduce the load on the society and the city so that it can be managed at the source by, divide, by segregating them, collecting them, segregating them as an individual response towards the manu uh, uh, so solid waste in one portion of the uh, last portion of the uh, module 4 of this subject. So this completes the module 4. Thank you.